Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the silver daily chart. Uh, goes back to about mid-2012. And these two areas that I've drawn in here, I'm going to call these congestion points. Uh, these are going to be big areas that we need to get through to make any kind of a move in the price of silver. Now we do see that we have this uptrend going here and you can see on these um, higher highs kind of here at least uh, we ticked up into sort of a new high there today although we're kind of backing off but these uh, congestion points uh, these are the areas based on traditional technical analysis and I'm talking about the Jesse Livermore type of support and resistance analysis these are the big areas that are very difficult to get through now admittedly traditional technical analysis support and resistance points are not going to be as valid in this market they're going to be somewhat valid but not nearly as valid and remember those are based upon overhead resistance is based upon people who bought something at a higher price than it's currently sitting at and are waiting for a rally back to their price to sell to get out of a losing investment uh, that's the reason why um, a bear markets uh, a, a new low price is the bear is the most bearish thing you can see in a bear market uh, and a new high price is the most bullish thing you can see in a bull market and uh, you just have to think about people's buying and selling behavior and that explains that so this uh, congestion area here is you can see it, it really stretches from about the uh, uh, month of June in 2013 all the way to October in 2014. So that, that congestion area is about 16 months. And you can see it broke down. Now the next one, uh, we have a lower one that we're trying to get out of. I didn't draw that one in here that goes from about 1380 to 16. But the next one that we're starting to enter into here is this one that goes for a period really only of about eight months or so and uh, so this one isn't going to this congestion period oh, I thought I had the arrow let me get the arrow here this congestion area is not going to be as difficult to get through as this congestion area and again that's based strictly on traditional technical analysis support and resistance now the reason why I said those aren't really as valid is because that means there's actual people there with a position who are waiting to sell we know that uh, most of this is paper trading and is there really anybody there sitting with a loss has anybody uh, held the position for that period of time it's a lot less likely that there are real positions out there in the market that there's really anybody who bought silver around 20 bucks and is sitting there waiting in the futures market uh, for you know years later has been rolling the contract over to get out even so uh, it only has a certain amount of validity uh, but it, it does have some validity because simply for the fact that these are points that traders watch so the main takeaway from this is going to be that uh, this is going to be a very difficult area to get through now a lot of people have talked about how bullish the recent move is really it's not that bullish a bullish move is going to be one that uh, let me get my line in here again uh, a real bullish move is going to be one that gets no it's not letting me give me just a moment the one that gets us through here and say a move like that uh, that's going to be a real bullish move now the last thing we want to put up here on this chart is the volume and the reason why is I pointed out many times that uh, depending on the length you take a chart out uh, the the more the volume is going to spike you can see for example let's let's just use this volume here you can see we have kind of this volume pyramid now the further we go out on the chart the more this area is going to consolidate so let's go all the way out to a monthly and take a look at that so you can see here that we have two massive unprecedented volume spikes the one the earlier one actually 
coincides with the smackdown that we have here in this this sell-off but the next one is this kind of fake uh, fake rally there and that's the volume and uh, it turned around and sold off but the current volume that we're on here you can see that is the biggest volume and based on a longer term chart you can see that for this volume to be below the price uh, of where it came in we're not that far away so a move a price move to really just this area here uh, say around 18 bucks is gonna put all this volume below the current price and that's gonna make it look like massive buying coming in uh, unfortunately, we don't have the data for this bottom here in 2008. We don't have the data for this period here. And even if we had the data, who knows whether it's going to be accurate. So that's what we're watching. A, a real bull confirmation is going to be a move to 18. Now, let's talk about this Yellen meeting. There's more that comes out here about the series of meetings that they're having. I personally believe something is going on behind the scenes but the thing is is that if there really if there really isn't anything going on behind the scenes you know you're not going to know they're not going to tell you and if there is something going on behind the scenes they're not going to tell you either way because if things are beginning to crumble they're the last thing they want to do is induce any kind of panic so let's take a listen to a part of this latest Mike Maloney and he put this out based on that strange series of meetings that was announced but with no analysis and uh, we're going to begin here with his treatment of the Schiller chart and uh, you can see here before we even start that uh, home prices actually never really corrected seriously uh, for the long-term trend they just kind of corrected a bubble and then have resumed really have made more than 50 percent of the bubble approaching a fibonacci two-thirds now so let's listen to mike maloney but this data i haven't presented for quite a while and when you add this to the stock market data this is one of the pieces and then the, the next chart after this that says that we're in for the biggest crash in history. This is Dr. Robert Schiller's data, and he's probably the world's authority on real estate prices and bubbles. And his data goes back into the late 1880s. I believe this goes back to 1887 or something like that. But you've got an area here of fair value, and then you've got areas where real estate went into small bubbles, and then the biggest bubble in history, basically engineered by the Federal Reserve, and then that the craziness with mortgage-backed securities and house flipping and all of that stuff. So the biggest hyper bubble in history, if you look at my 2005 predictions from the year 2005, I was presenting this data before the markets started rolling over and crashed a couple of years before. So the markets didn't roll over and crash until 2007. I was giving that pre presentation, I believe it was August of 2005, that I was showing and I said that real estate was in a hyper bubble and that it was going to crash. And it was based on Robert Schiller's data, which back then was very obscure data. Nobody paid attention to it. It was just a college professor with his ramblings, everybody thought. But if you look at this, I mean, real estate crashed in the crisis of 08 and just came down near fair value and bounced back up into an extreme bubble. So real estate is going to be crashing along with the stock market. But then we have been in a bull market for 35 years. Since 1981 until 2016, we've been in this perfect bond bull market. This is the 30 year US Treasury bond price. And during a crash, people do run toward bonds as the, one of the safe haven investments. There's precious metals and bonds are basically the safe haven investments. And so bonds will be the short term beneficiary of this. But eventually, with all the currency printing 
and the Fed buying bonds to print currency uh, off of. That's the way that they do it is the Fed writes a check for an asset. And usually that asset is a bond, but since 2008, it's a mixture of bonds and mortgage-backed securities. So the Fed is going to be probably buying stuff like crazy and creating insane amounts of currency going into this stock market crash, but they're not going to be able to prevent it. And, you know, the last time they started their printing right down near the bottom of the crash, the crash had already happened. The markets would have bottomed sometime or another and recovered, and they just uh, probably caught it a little bit early. The markets should have gone down a little bit further than they did uh, and reached equilibrium before they bounced. But that brings me right back to all of these questions about this low, the latest forecast. This is still a forecast for the first quarter of GDP because all of the data from that first quarter is not in yet. So when this data becomes set in stone, I'm expecting this to be a minus figure. Then you've got the extra Federal Reserve Board of Governor meetings, the fact that every news agency has ignored the board meetings and they just covered the White House meeting with a bunch of fluff that was all based off of the White House press release. And that signals to me that the, the press is either complacent or complicit. They are either going along with the government and basically saying everything is fine, do not worry, Janet Yellen is doing a wonderful job, or they're just complacent and the best that they can do is all cover the same story and all right at the same. Either way, it's a very bad thing and uh, it worries me that there could be some big blow up happening in the background, something much bigger than anybody knows about right now, that the Fed is currently in the process of dealing with and papering over. So that's the Mike Maloney take. Now it kind of sounds a little bit like the Andy Hoffman take, uh, not really willing to stick his neck out and, you know, uh, talk about conspiracy theories. Well, I, I don't think Mike really thinks that it's just a coincidence that the press all does the same thing and, and doesn't report anything. But uh, again, the larger that, that you get as far as in the financial media, and uh, you know, you, you see that with people like Eric Sprott. There's certain things that they can't say. Uh, p- people that are billionaires can't say certain things. And uh, I think people as big as Mike Maloney can't say certain things. But uh, I wanted to take you this story here. This is uh, something that no one can really say. And uh, just to show you how true that is, uh, this is an article. I have no idea uh, the validity of this article or what it means, uh, but I think it's some kind of trial balloon. But just, just to show you here, this is one I think it was covered on before it's news and uh, in the alternative media. This is a story, and you can see here, it posted by U.S. Reporter, and this is on Superstation 95. Who knows? I don't even know. I, I don't really even care uh, to bother to find out if this is some legitimate site. Probably not. But it looks like some kind of trial balloon. Maybe this is the type of thing that the intelligence agencies do. Uh, Who knows? But look at the title and the date. And uh, you can see China says no dollars for new yuan. I'm going to read this and then comment. In a shocking move likely to crush the U.S. economy overnight, China is refusing to make its new gold-backed yuan convertible from or to U.S. dollars. The new yuan will be introduced next Tuesday, April 19th. Now that's, April 19th is a big date for New World Order type of people. Uh, That was the date of the Waco uh, incident. That was the date of the Murrah building, Oklahoma City bombing. It was the date of, uh, I believe it was the Reichstag fire in Germany. You have to uh, check that. It's, it's an important New World Order date. 
when the International Monetary Fund agreed to add the yuan to the basket of world currencies used for global reserves and international trade, they wanted China to make the yuan more reliable as a currency. Since then, China has almost unpegged its yuan from the dollar, allowing its value to fluctuate on world markets. But for years, China has been amassing huge amounts of gold bullion. Some have said their appetite for bullion has been staggering. And with a new gold-backed yuan to be issued next Tuesday, the entire world will have a choice of a new currency to use for international trade. The old U.S. dollar, which is backed by nothing, or the new Chinese yuan, which is backed by gold. Which currency would you use? When this new currency is issued, countries that have been forced to use the U.S. dollars for decades and have had to keep billions of dollars in their foreign currency reserves will be free to dump those dollars, but they won't be able to dump them to China for the new gold-backed yuan. China has reportedly decided, quote, there can be no conversion of gold-backed yuan to or from U.S. dollars. What China fears is that many countries around the world will want to trade their reserved U.S. dollars for the new yuan, leaving China with mountains of worthless U.S. dollars. China already has several trillion in U.S. dollar reserves and does not want or need more. If news of this decision by China is correct, then countries around the world may just have to decide whether or not they wish to continue trading with the USA at all. The upheaval this could cause as early as next week would be staggering. This is a fast developing story. Check back. Very interesting. Uh, looks like a trial balloon, but let's think about the thesis of this. Now, first off, we want to say that uh, for China to do something like that, I mean, they could state that policy that they're not willing to exchange U.S. dollars for the new Chinese currency. But in reality, how much could that be enforced? Uh, not so much, because people who wanted to get out of dollars could simply trade their dollars for other currencies, and then they could trade those other currencies for the new Chinese currency. So looking at the Chinese currency chart, you can see that uh, after China... Um, started to devalue we'll say if you remember the series of uh, ports blowing up in china you remember that story coincided with this series of uh, uh, weakenings in the chinese yuan uh, for the longest time i had tracked this chart of uh, how the chinese currency had been strengthening uh, against the u.s dollar and that had been going on for some time so you can see starting in 2005 2006, uh, the dollar was falling drastically against the Chinese currency, 8.3 to the dollar, down all the way down to 6.3. And, and then you can see that the recent move here is a retracement of that, but not that serious of a retracement. And you can see that now, uh, perhaps, the trend is starting to resume. So is there anything to that story? I don't know. Uh, I do believe the Chinese have been amassing phenomenal amounts of gold. And I think the number is probably far larger than anybody believes. We know the United States did uh, something like that after World War II uh, with Bretton Woods and the agreement to exchange uh, gold actually began with FDR uh, seizing uh, American citizens gold and then uh, pegging the price uh, at uh, a significant higher price basically devaluing the dollar against gold and then agreeing to fix that gold price and exchange it uh, with foreigners and that allowed the United States to dominate world economies for many many years because the currency was back with gold makes perfect sense that the Chinese would try to do something similar so this story may have legs. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, if it does, uh, there's not a lot of days left until doom on. That's about five days away. Uh, I would say based on percentages, it's probably about a one or two percent chance. Now, I want to finish with this article about Paul Ryan. Uh, I just have to say to start with, the guy looks like uh, Lurch or somebody from the Adams family there. He's a scary looking guy in that picture. 
But, uh, you know, Paul Rhino, Paul Ryan, Rhino Republican, PR, on the PR, Puerto Rico bailout. And you can see that Ryan's trying to push a bill here. Interesting spin on this, because he's trying to say, he's trying to take the position that uh, he's against a Wall Street bailout. So you can see the spin here. Speaker Paul Ryan, Republican Wisconsin, blasted Wall Street investors on Wednesday as he tried to tamp down conservative discontent with a bill to assist Puerto Rico. Assist how? Uh, are you going to assist them by loosening up the laws? Or are you going to assist them by giving them more money? The GOP leader charged that special money interest groups on Wall Street are trying to sabotage the legislation by billing it as a bailout. Ryan said that the government will be forced to actually bail out the island if Congress fails to act, predicting massive defaults on its bonds. Well, why? Why do they have to bail it out? Why don't they just let the bonds default? Quote, many big money interest groups on Wall Street know this and have put a lot of money towards sabotaging this legislation in order to force a last minute bailout upon Puerto Rico, putting U.S. taxpayers on the hook for their bad loans. His office said in a lengthy statement, they call this a bailout because they know it is not and a bailout is what they want. So this snake, this slimy weasel, this piece of human, okay, I'm not going to keep going, uh, is trying to convince you that he cares about taxpayers. That is the most ludicrous uh, proposition. Uh, the only person I think that is more dis a dis more despicable rhino than this Paul Ryan is John Boehner, who was gone because uh, the, the crybaby Boehner, uh, he would pretend to fight the Democrats on spending, and then uh, and then he would kowtow to them. Ryan is the same thing. These people, that, you know, if Donald Trump can sweep these people out of the Republican Party or even destroy the actually at this point, uh, seeing the way the Republican Party treated Trump in Colorado, I'm sure you're aware of the story where they just denied people even the ability to vote. Um, I would be perfectly happy to see the Republican Party completely destroyed and wiped off the face of the earth. Um, in my mind, these people are much more despicable than uh, Bernie Sanders socialists who openly say what they are. This man, this man is a liar. He will not tell you what he is. Just like Ted Cruz, just like John Boehner, these people are not conservatives. And what does it mean? What does it mean that these people would go to such extremes? Well, I think it means that the system is, as Mike Maloney says, is on the precipice of the largest financial collapse in the history of the world. And uh, people like Paul Ryan and John Boehner and I, all the rest of every one of them is maybe in fear of being tarred and feathered and put on trial and thrown in prison for life or uh, rolling the guillotines and being beheaded. I don't know what uh, they know is coming. But if, if we go by what these people are doing, then something very, very serious is coming. And uh, I think Mike Maloney is, uh, is seeing that now. And we'll talk to you next time.